Hey everyone, welcome to Lookout. Trying something new here. We're working on a new way of showing our information in video. So we're gonna um, kind of narrate our way through some uh, Google Earth imagery here today. We've got some uh, pretty fresh infrared imagery from about 5 p.m., 5.20 p.m. of the Caldor fire. Fire made a really big run today and it's um, kind of knocking on the door of Echo Summit. And so we're going to walk through a little of what happened through the day and then what we think uh, might happen next. So here's some heat imagery. This is showing the head of the fire and we'll zoom out and you can see uh, Lake Tahoe here, South Lake Tahoe. And as we come in closer, um, we're going to start looking around Strawberry because that's where the fire made its biggest run today. Um, last night, the fire had um, burned up on the north side of Highway 50 and then um, it had spotted over by Strawberry. And crews worked in Strawberry uh, intensely yesterday trying to keep the fire out of the structures there. Um, last night, there was a run of the fire and the fire over um, towards the bottom of the screen here, it crossed bulldozer lines. and um, This spot overnight grew quite large. Um, you can see the area that's shown in gray above Strawberry. And uh, so this morning there was a spot fire up by Lover's Leap, um, which is just upstream here of Strawberry. And today basically we had three different head fire runs with the wind. So we had a run on the right that was um, where the fire crossed the dozer lines yesterday um, overnight. And that ran. Um, east towards Sierra Tahoe ski area. Then there was a run from Strawberry up towards Twin Bridges on the south side of Highway 50, and then also the fire on the north side of Highway 50 ran today also. So basically we have these three simultaneous fire runs up. And um, one thing we've talked about here on the lookout was just the, um, the idea of alignment, which is a firefighter's term, which is when um, the terrain, the fuels, and the wind all come together in a way that um, all three are what the fire needs to run. So we had alignment today of the wind blowing up the canyon, as you can see up into this bowl here, Sierra at Tahoe. The fire pushed, kind of worked where it could find fuels, because you can see there's a lot of granite here um, in the high country. And people have been saying, yeah, well, the granite's going to keep the fire out of um, Lake Tahoe, and we don't need to worry about it getting through Desolation Wilderness. And it's like, well, that's true. Um, but the fire has been really good at threading this needle. And so as we move up here, um, here's Twin Bridges and Camp Sacramento is kind of right um, in the middle here of where the, you see the little arrow, that little circle. So the worry yesterday um, I had was that once the fire got established here around Camp Sacramento, it would have this alignment that could run up through Sierra Tahoe. So that's pretty much what happened as well as um, having these two other heads that are running. So the north side of the head ran here and it kind of picked its way up through the granite on uh, Ralston Peak, and uh, as of about 6 p.m., there's some spot fires on the other side of Ralston Peak here into the basin above Echo Lake. Um, the, the middle head ran on the north side of 50 um, in these heavy fuels up towards Phillips, and that's been spotting farther towards Echo Lake. And then um, the south head kind of met up with the other one. So there hasn't been a lot of push into the, the main part of Sierra at Tahoe, but the worrisome thing right now is just that we've got so much fire here in this basin with two days of winds coming at us that we've kind of got, you know, there's way more fire on the ground here than we're going to be able to, you know, mop up or put out or anything in the next 24 hours. So kind of looking at it from a little higher up, there's just lots of ways that the fire now can run out to the east. Um, and, of course, the concern with it running towards the east is... Um, when you get to Echo Summit, there's this big drop off down here into Myers, um, Christmas Valley, and then eventually up to you know, Lake Valley and South Lake Tahoe. So the big concern now is just that the fire, as it runs, is going to be spotting down into this highly urbanized area. And um, so that's why everyone's been asked to evacuate. So if you haven't evacuated yet and you live in the area, you know, around Myers or south of there, um, you should. Because this is, you know, there's very little that firefighters are going to be able to do to stop this fire. 
Uh, we, we don't have any opportunities really in the terrain that lend themselves to stopping the fire. There's too much fire on the ground. The winds are too intense. So bulldozer fire lines that we've been putting in uh, haven't been holding up to long range spotting. So it, it's, um, it's fairly low odds that firefighters are gonna do anything to stop the fire from spreading farther to the east. Elsewhere on the fire, um, haven't had much, uh, many reports from farther out to the west. Um, and this infrared flight that I have right now, it only captured the east side of the fire. But the other big push that's happening right now is here towards Silver Lake on Highway 88. Um, the Caples fire is something we've been talking about. That's an area that was prescribed burned and also had um, the prescribed burn kind of turned into a wildfire. Um, but anyway, that area reduced the fuels a lot in this area in Caples Creek. So as of today, the fire really hasn't spread much. It's the fire hit the prescribed burn and it really hasn't spread much into it. And that's the reason we do these prescribed burns is to deprive fires, larger fires of the fuels. And so, you know, when we look at this whole landscape, um, if we had done a lot more prescribed burning and larger projects, not just, you know, 100 acres here or there, that's really what we need in this era of mega fires to, to get a handle on these larger fires is we need to create these landscape scale reductions in fuels that we can get by doing things like prescribed burning. Oh, it's still going. Okay, so here's the, um, the Caples fire here is in blue. So anyway, there was a big run today um, that's pushing not straight towards Kirkwood, but Kirkwood is definitely threatened by fire growing on this side. Um, now that the fires outflank the Caples fire, it's going to be able to move um, when we have different winds up towards Kirkwood. So um, the granite here is buying us some advantages, but the fire, things are so dry that the fire is kind of able to spot its way through the granite and find ways through. So it's slowing the fire down and taking the intensity out of it, but it isn't a sure bet that it's going to stop the fire. Anyway, Highway 88 is a major uh, control objective for the, the fire team. It's one of the you know only options for controlling the fire on this flank. So a lot of energy is going into containing the fire on that side on Highway 88. The other area we've been watching closely is on the northwest corner of the fire here east of Pleasant Valley. This is the um, area that was hot yesterday. We're looking at Butte Creek and the North Fork of the Consumnus River coming down by Sweeney's Crossy Crossing. And the fire had spread last night about half mile down Pleasant Valley direction uh, in Camp Creek. So it looks like um, as of about 445, there was no new heat on this end of the fire on the Pleasant Valley side. And there was some scattered heat here um, between Sweeney's Crossing and Happy Valley. Um, on the middle fork of the Consumnus here, um, this hasn't spread for a couple of days now and it's cooling off. So that's your fire, a um, lot going on, um, especially here on the southeast side, the new run here towards Silver Lake and Kirkwood. And of course, the big news is the run towards Echo Summit and Tahoe. So we'll keep you post on this. We'll post updates, um, keep watching the lookout. Um, we promise you a morning report every day. We'll do evening reports when we have things that are worthy. Thanks for your support, and um, if you're enjoying our coverage and want to help support us um, moving into video and podcasting, you can make a donation through the Lookout webpage, thelookout.org. Thanks a lot, and uh, check back with us.